The Supreme Court set to hear oral arguments this week on whether the Trump administration can include a very controversial citizenship question on the 2020 census. Joining us with all the insight you could ever need into this issue, SCOTUS blog co-founder Amy Howe. Amy, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So you got 17 states here uh, suing the Department of Commerce. The charge is being led by New York State, but 16 other states, plus uh, the District of Columbia, plus the state of California filing an amicus brief. They don't want the question, the citizenship question on the 2020 census. Why? They say that if the citizenship question is on the census, then households that have undocumented immigrants and even some households that have people who are here who are documented but are, are Hispanic citizen, Hispanic immigrants won't re return the questionnaire, and they say that's going to result in an undercount. And but it's, it's out of fear, if I understand. They're worried that having the, the, the question will invite and having illegal immigrants, undocumented immigrants in this country fill out the, you know, answer that question truthfully would lead to some fear about law enforcement that, coming out. Exactly, that somehow that, that data is going to be used against them, and the federal government says it won't. But that's the, the fear that it's going to lead to an undercount, and that that undercount, you know, that you fill out your census form and you send it in, and you don't normally think a lot about it. Right. But, you know, we use the census data for all kinds of things, most importantly to allocate members of the House of Representatives after each census. And so after the 2010 census, Texas got four more members in the House. New York lost. Significant. Significant. Yeah, like New York lost yeah. two. And so the challengers say that states with large populations of undocumented immigrants could lose members in the House. They could also lose federal funding. There's a lot of federal funding that hinges on population that's allocated using data from the census. In fiscal year 2016, for example, it was $900 billion, with a wow. B, dollars worth of funding. So it sounds like you're saying there are these sort of the census has these political consequences, you know, Democrats versus Republicans and districting, but it also has federal government funding consequences. Yes, and just so to throw states in... stand to lose big. Yes, they, and just to yeah. throw in one more sort of piece of the puzzle, you know, we use the, the members of the House of Representatives to figure out the Electoral College. Um, uh, so it, it also sounds, though, like the Secretary of Commerce, uh, the Secretary of Commerce's decision here to, to add the question is relatively in keeping with the Trump administration's overall policy on immigration and the border. You know, these sort of hawkish views, um, not wanting folks who are in the United States illegally uh, to participate in the political system. Yeah, and so there's a part of what's sort of the, the surrounding the lawsuit, there's a little bit of dispute about why exactly it's been added. The Trump administration's position in the Supreme Court uh, is basically that the Department of Justice, one of the reasons they say we're adding this is that the Department of Justice wants this data to help better enforce federal voting rights laws. And, and that's led to some of the or that's the official rationale. That's right? part of their yeah. official rationale. And the challenger's argument is you came into office, you decided you weren't were going to do it, and, and that this is sort of the after the, fa the fact rationale that you, you've come up with to justify doing it. I think there was a criticism of Secretary Wilbur Ross um, from Democrats saying that he lied under oath during testimony on Capitol Hill on this issue, right? Yes, and more broadly, the Trump administration's position is effectively that the challengers are making a little bit of a mountain out of a molehill. This is how things work. You know, you some a new, there's a new administration, a new official comes in, decides they want to do something. Uh, they might go and ask other agencies for help, and they may not do what their staff necessarily recommends that they're doing, but that's, that's how the government works. Well, Amy, thanks so much for offering us your insight and expertise today. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. You bet.